and I'm the Chief Revenue and Innovation Officer for the Texas Restaurant Association. And this is the third and final webinar that we're doing with GoDaddy, uh, at least for now. We've had some really great subjects that we've covered before with Jeffrey. Um, so we're really excited for this one. Um, I know that we're gonna be recording it and so we'll be able to send it out to people afterward. Please ask all the questions you can in the chat window or using the Q&A window. Um, Jeffrey is a wonderful presenter and I know he's going to help educate us on how to really use Instagram and turn it into some ROI. Jeffrey, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Anna, and thank you for that introduction. I was just smiling and laughing so big. I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, that is the nicest introduction ever. <laughs> so thank you, thank you so much. And thank you all for attending today. It's Wednesday, almost a Tuesday. I know I'm going back and forth with my days, <laughs> but we're here. It's a great day. The sun is shining in Austin, Texas. It's 59 degrees now, it was just 60 degrees, so there we go. Um, but I'm excited about being with y'all here today and talking about five surefire ways to turn Instagram followers into customers in 2021. So we're here in 2021, and I know we're hungry, we're excited. More importantly, we're ready to get customers ordering from us, catering orders. Holidays are about to start coming back up again. You got Valentine's Day. I almost said my dad's birthday's coming up. I mean, it is his little holiday. <laughs> St. Patrick's Day's coming up. And of course you got spring coming up as well. So I definitely wanted to break this down and some of this might be um, not elementary, but just foundation stuff, but some of it's gonna be a little bit of nitty gritty. I encourage you all to ask questions, type it in the chat box as well. I'm gonna be directing my attention to the um, chat box as well, just so I can make sure I keep up with all of you. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to put that in there. And it's going to stop me as well if we have any great questions i'm going to answer those as well um, but i've been with godaddy for it'll be six years this year in march i just thought about that <laughs> so it'll be six years in march really excited about that um, but more importantly i think my favorite thing about this role and about working at godaddy is getting to help entrepreneurs getting to help local business owners but more importantly getting to also learn from you all as well um, with your dealing with customers day in day out um, I feel like I learned the most from business owners, of course, and what you're going through every day and how we can make sure that we're helping you with these social media sites, with making sure that you're getting the most out of your online presence and you're getting engaged with your customers no matter what. So we have a stacked agenda today. We're gonna to be going over how to get found where diners are looking, of course, definitely wanna be where they are. Um, and that's gonna be on their cell phones. I know you're thinking, well, duh, Jeffrey, of course, but. I think about this and I think about a restaurant that I went to, this was last year and it just sticks out in my mind. Um, this was back when I was at home in Georgia. Um, we had went over to South Carolina for dinner and I was like, y'all, I told my parents, I was like, this is a great restaurant, we have to go. And um, they're like, all right, all right. So they hardly ever do things like that. And they're like, we'll do this for you. We got there, it was closed. Um, I was a little bit upset, a little bit embarrassed because I made my parents like go all this way. But anyways, we'll dive into that in just a little bit later. After that, we're gonna go over how to set up online ordering and offer delivery and takeout services. Um, I think about a lot of the businesses right here. I'm in Austin, Texas, and I think about a lot of the businesses here just on Manor Road. I think about Bird Bird Biscuit. I think about a new business that just popped up Lola's um, Donuts that is right over here. And, but one of my favorite businesses, Bird Bird Biscuit, is they just decided to start using their um, go-to window right when everything started. But more importantly, they're reaching out on social media, they're getting engaged with their customers and they're using user-generated content, but they're also having you order online as well. After that, we're gonna go over how to capitalize with Instagram stories to leverage promotions. You always wanna make sure that you're gonna leverage um, Instagram stories. Instagram's, uh, yes, it is so good. But Anna, it's also one of those biscuits where it's, it's bigger than your eyes. So you get it and you're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna finish that? And I have to finish it in one day or else I feel so bad. So I usually have it for breakfast and I'm like, I'm gonna cut this in half and eat it for a snack or like a little bit of my lunch later on. But if y'all haven't been, you gotta try their biscuits out. They are amazing. I try not to go all the time, so, <laughs> but they are good. After that, we're gonna dive into how to turn your review sites into a customer service powerhouse. I know we talk about this a lot and I was talking to someone the other day and they're like, oh yeah, they're like business, some business owners just don't like Yelp or Google or review sites and which is true. We all don't like them for certain reasons, but at the same time, you know, we definitely wanna make sure that we're communicating on these sites. We're showing great customer service on these sites, whether we're taking great reviews and we're putting them on our social media sites 
or maybe your business that just really only responds to your negative reviews and not your positive reviews, or maybe you're just learning how to respond to reviews in the first place. So you're in the right spot. And after that, we're going to go over how to gain insight and revenue from metrics analytics. So definitely want to start with get found where diners are looking. And I think one of the first things, and I just said this, is I think of Yelp, Google. Um, I can say this because I don't have her plugged in right now. I also think of my Alexa sometimes, or you know, even asking Siri as well, have an Apple Watch. So I feel like we always need to make sure that we are going to be where our audience is, and that is online. Um, I took this information, was doing some research, and found this actually on Wumpel. If you haven't checked out their site, they're a great resource for local businesses. And they're, in this article, they're talking about how online reviews impact small businesses' revenue. One of the first things I think back to when I first started getting into social media when I was in college, when I was actually working at a Fuzzy's Taco Shop, um, and I was also a bartender, you know, working my way through college, staying up those late nights, still studying. <laughs> but one of my first things I come to mind with is claiming the business page, I had to do that, and setting up our social media presence. I was the person that was posting, I was the person that was also responding to our reviews as well. So I was doing a lot while still in school, but now you can hire people to do that, or you have your staff, or you have interns that do that now to respond to these reviews, or you, you're, you yourself as a business owner, you're responding back to these reviews. But one of the first things, the biggest things that I feel like we miss sometimes is just claiming our business page. And yes, this might seem elementary, but at the same time, this is where you're gonna be found. This is where your diners are looking. They're looking you up on Instagram, they're looking you up on their iPhones, their Androids, um, Facebook, Twitter, and they're coming across your social media and your review sites. So you wanna make sure not just your review sites are claimed, but you also have your social media sites up. You're active, you're engaging, you're posting great content. If you're not, then you're kind of leaving, leaving all that money on the table. And you definitely wanna make sure that you're picking out the social media sites that are gonna be best for you, the review sites are gonna be best for you. You can look at some businesses and you're like, they don't have many reviews on Yelp, but they have 500 over on Google. And as long as you're responding to your reviews, as long as you're getting engaged with your audience, that's what matters the most. Yes, claim your listings, but really look at the sites that are going to bring you the most revenue. If you're not getting that many reviews on Yelp and your Yelp page is claimed, you know, try ushering those people over to Yelp from Google or Facebook. Um, on your Google page, respond to all those 300 reviews. Just really make sure that you're first and foremost reclaiming that page. Now, when you're getting found, you definitely want to make sure that all of this is in place. Um, your Google My Business account is really important. More importantly, this is where most consumers are going now to not only see uh, menus, they're not only seeing updated times, but they're also trying to see when the business might be at its busiest, when they can also do delivery, when they can do takeout. Um, different offerings. And also, you're also able to get a little bit more out of Google My Business as well. I love this feature right here. Um, so we're looking in the middle. Of course, we see all across the board, they're talking about dine-in, takeout, delivery. Um, but one of the great things I love about this is right here, your match 66%. So Google My Business actually started this thing where um, if you use it enough and you let its algorithm work, it can actually tell you um, if you're going to be inclined to visit this business, if you're going to like this business, if it's a good match for you from your overall profile. Um, so in mine, it actually tells me I'm more inclined <laughs> to visit um, more taco shops, more steak places, um, butchers. Um, whenever I try to look for a bar, it says, you know, not a great match or something to that effect, which is kind of true while I do partake in adult beverages now all the time. But you definitely want to make sure you're looking at this. This is going to be a great way for your customers to figure out um, if they're going to be engaged with your business, if it's right for them, and if it's the right match. So definitely make sure you have all this information filled out. More importantly, the service options. Do you offer delivery? Do you do catering options right now? Especially with the holidays coming back up again. Um, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. Are you already promoting that? Do you have um, prefix menus already um, ready to go on social media? You know, are you going to do, are you going to have your customers dine in? They're going to be on the patio. This is the time to start thinking about these things right now. So you definitely wanna make sure while we're starting the year off fresh, you know, do an inventory of all your review sites. Are they claimed? Do they ha have the right hours? Are they updated for you to do dine-in, takeout, delivery, or catering? Um, do you have your new hours updated for the new year? Maybe holidays coming up, offerings that you might have as well. So definitely make sure you're taking an inventory of all your social media sites, all your review sites, and really lining everything up to say, all right, this is what we're doing now. This is what we're not doing. This is outdated. 
because this is like I said, where your customers, they're coming, they're trying to decide if they wanna do business with you or the other business right down the street. So definitely make sure that you're not just letting these review sites just pass you by. Yes, it's a new year, you already have them claimed, but do a little bit of inventory. Make sure everything is in great shape and you're ready to go for this new year as well. So Google Trend Tools, I love this because as far as a restaurant, you can actually see um, where interests are coming from different regions, um, where people are actually searching for you, whether that's topics, um, related inquiries, um, but also you can see kind of the interest over time as well. Google My Business isn't just a platform that we go to look for reviews and look for cool pictures of your great food and drinks. This is also a great tool for you as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, to make sure that you're doing a deeper dive into what's working for your business, what's not working, and also you can actually maybe promote or advertise to a different region as well. If you're getting more people from out of state or more people from a different county, you know, promote to that. You know, use that to your advantage. That's what these tools and analytics are here for, which I'm going to dive into a little bit later. But definitely make sure you're really using your pages as a whole. Um, I know the last thing we want to do sometimes is, all right, y'all, I'm going to go over here and look at my analytics and my metrics and, you know, just study these for a minute. It doesn't sound like the, the greatest thing to do, <laughs> but it is actually fun. You can actually pick up some cool tips and tricks and more importantly, kind of outsmart your competition because you're really doing that homework for your local business as well. So I think about this and I don't know if anybody ever remembers this a while back, like when social media, I think first blew up, everyone's like, oh, only post so many times a day or so many times a week, don't post too much because you know it's gonna make you seem like you're doing too much. That is very true. If you post too much and it's not the right content, it's not gonna hit. Now, if you're posting a lot, and it's great content and it's relevant and you're posting great stories, you're posting video, you're posting links, you're posting blogs, that's gonna work. And the reason why that works is because people, they wanna be engaged. They don't wanna be sold to. They wanna hear a story, they wanna hear an antidote, they wanna see great food, great drinks. They also wanna make sure that you're paying that experience for them on social media. I mean, that's what we come to social media for is to be social. I mean, some of us, yes, we scroll through social media, we might not like any posts, but you better believe that those people that are not liking your post, you know they're probably showing up to your business. They're seeing that great food. So you definitely want to make sure that even if they're not liking your post, you're still getting found. And I love this example right here from the SIBO Wine Bar. Great ways to get found. Use relevant hashtags. I'm going to dive into this in just a little bit. But when you use hashtags and you want to make sure that you're getting found, especially 2021, there's no wrong way to use hashtags. And yes, you're probably thinking, but wait, there might be. There's really no wrong way to use hashtags unless you do one run, one run on sentence. More importantly, you don't space out your hashtags as well. Um, but I love this example right here, especially these hashtags, Miami being local, Coral Gables getting even more localized, Miracle Mile, Comfort Food Delivery, TO, Takeout TO, um, Takeout Toronto. So definitely make sure that you're using these types of hashtags to be, come, become found to be even more localized in your area. When you do that, it's gonna make people be engaged with you more. More importantly, you're gonna show up in more conversations. And at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want people talking about your business. We want people saving posts from you. We want people sharing this great photo of SIBO Wine Bar in their Instagram stories. You know, that's what really makes people find you. That's what really helps you get engaged is when you have content that's gonna encourage saves, comments, and shares. So you have to post more. And you have to make sure that's going to be the right content that's going to gain engagement from your audience. Now, we just talked about um, hashtags for a second, but right here, this is another way that you can use hashtags. If you want to collect, connect, collect, if you want to connect with your millennials, Generation Z, you've got to make sure you're using hashtags. And the way to use the right hashtags is use one that's going to tell. I know this kind of sounds a little corny, tell, that's gonna tell a story about your business, but more importantly, that's gonna resonate with your business as well. So I love Condor Chocolates. It's this local um, chocolate store out in Athens, Georgia, go dogs. Uh, <laughs> I'm actually wearing my UGA sweater right now. Um, but you definitely wanna make sure that you're using a great hashtag. And I love this one because, well, yes, you're probably thinking, would it make sense, Jeffrey, if they just use hashtag, hashtag Condor Chocolates? Yes, you can. But I love the way they took this approach on their own branded hashtag. Hashtag chocolate tells a story. And you're probably thinking like, okay, anybody can do that. But yes, if you're a wine bar, wine tells a story, which it does. If you've had a few glasses, it will tell a story. But also chocolate tells a story as well. 
Think about times that you've gotten chocolate or your favorite times that you've eaten chocolate. You probably have good memories of those. That's gonna tell an interesting story. So think about ways that you can tell your story, whether you're a restaurant or you're a bar, um, really make sure that you're figuring out what type of hashtag you wanna use to connect not only with millennials, but your audience. And by using this hashtag consistently, you're gonna really make sure that your audience knows how to use this as well. And when they start using that, hey, you can start using user-generated content. You can start taking a break from creating all this great content and really do what your audience wants you to do. And that's really use their content. It's letting you, the business owner, make your audience become a part of your community even more so. So when in doubt, hashtag it out. <laughs> so using user-generated content, which we were just talking about, but applying that to using with hashtags as well. So these are all great examples. And especially when you're on Instagram and just some of my favorite restaurants that I visit in Austin and also in Atlanta as well. But Taco to Austin, um, haven't, haven't you heard Saturdays are for tacos? So usually, you know, like Saturdays for the girls or Saturday, Sundays are for the boys, things like that. But no, Saturdays are for tacos. And they got this great picture from Bryn McKenzie or for Bree McKenzie. So they just did a camera right here and gave credit to the person actually took the photo. Now you're probably thinking, well, we can just take the photo and just reuse it. No. One, I don't suggest doing that unless you're retweeting. That always helps. But number two, when you ask for that customer's permission to use that photo, they're not going to say no. They're going to say yes, unless they're not supposed to be there. Um, but they're going to say yes. And more importantly, that's going to put you in touch with your customers and make them feel like they're part of the brand and even humanize your business even more. So whenever you're trying to think about, hmm, what type of content should I start creating? How can I get more connected with my audience? And more importantly, how do I turn just these followers into customers? You've got to start using your customer's content. That's how you're going to create more people coming to your business, ordering from you, because they're going to trust branded or non-branded content from branded content. So Tucker Mucho did a great job. Olive in June, ATX did this photo. We'll be having cocktails on the patio all winter long. You know, this great photo from these girls right here. I love this aerial shot from Old Thousand ATX. If you haven't been to this place, you've got to check it out. And I love their hashtag that they're using right here as well. And something like this is simple. It's Takeout Tuesday, it's Takeout Wednesday. Every day is Takeout Day almost, but you can play it in your favor and do it on Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, what have you. But I love how Old Thousand worked this in. It's Takeout Tuesday and we're living for this bread by Austin Food Adventures. They took the picture. General Sal's Chili Wontons, on Zao Main and brisket fried rice. This is so good. All this food is great. Um, I haven't eaten lunch yet, so I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> but definitely make sure um, that you always ask for permission to get yours, to get these photos. Now, Kristen just asked a great question. Is it best to always ask permission to use any guest photos? Kristen, I hope I'm saying your name right. Yes, that is 100% what exactly what you want to do. Now, unless you're on Twitter, you can always retweet. You can always do a quote retweet. But the reason why I always suggest, and I will always say this, no matter what, that you should ask for your audience's permission is because one, it's, it's going to humanize your brand. And number two, can help you connect with that audience member as well. And it's fun. And like I said, they're not going to say no, because it makes them feel like that little local celebrity. So always ask for that permission as well. I mean, you know, this is too loud. Chris. Now, whenever you're thinking about this, you also want to think about your influencers. And yes, while we're saying, okay, influencers, I'm not talking about the people with the million followers or the 350,000 followers. I'm talking about the people in your own backyard. And by that, I mean the people that are already coming to your business as well, eating your food, drinking your drinks, getting catering from your business as well. So when you think back on this and you look back at your um, tag posts, you can actually see who's actually tagging different posts and reach out to those people saying, hey, We've seen that you tagged us in a lot of our posts. We'd love to invite you in or, you know, set you up with a great meal or they can pay for their own meal. But if they're tagging you in these posts, you should reach out to them, strike up a conversation with them. And if you have any new mini releases or if you have a new drink cocktail coming out, you know, ask them to actually, you know, write a little piece on it, take some great photos on it. And the way that you want to engage with these influencers or your brand ambassadors um, is follow them on social media. If you're not following people back on social media, don't be that business that has zero followers. You're not, a, you're not like some Justin Bieber person, <laughs> but follow back your customers. That's going to make them feel so excited. More importantly, they're like, whoa, Paperboy or 
um, Texas Restaurant Association decided to follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Oh my gosh, you know, that's a big deal. That means that company actually recognizes you and see you as an important person in that field. Now engage with their post. Don't just, oh wait, they posted about us and I'm not gonna like it. No, like that post, share that to your social media sites. So like in these next two points. So I went in here, did a little bit of digging. They actually liked um, Marky ATX's um, post on this. And when I went a little bit further and I, and I got to look at his stories that same day, he was like, it was great. Um, it was awesome. But the great thing was, is he was like, I was invited to come and check this out. So they're actually hosting a few influencers, bloggers to come and check out their food, check out their menu. So if you're ever able to do that, you're able to host people um, in your business or maybe send them some food to go or they can do a takeout, you know, definitely let them review your business that they've already been great fans of you as well. And after that, of course, get familiar with their style, their interests and their followers. Just because they're talking about your business, it might not necessarily be the greatest match for you. So definitely make sure you're looking at if this person's gonna be a good match for you. Are they gonna spread great things about your business? Are they gonna talk positively about your business? But more importantly, are they gonna give your business an honest review? I was looking at, um, if, if you're on Instagram, I suggest everyone follow the creators. It's a really great page on Instagram. It's C-R-E-A-T-O-R-S, creators. And what this does is every now and then they'll have um, Instagram influencers or people that work at Instagram or Facebook, and they'll actually give you tips and tricks on your stories, your reels, posting and content, different things like that. And one of the events that I actually attended on Monday from Glopedia, it's this beauty influencer. And she was talking about partnering up with local businesses. And one thing she was saying is, if she doesn't like the business or she hasn't been to it and they try to get her to promote it, she's not really going to. So think about that when you're looking for influencers or brand ambassadors. If they haven't been to your business and they've never eaten your food or had your drinks, probably wouldn't be the best person to talk about your business and promote you, even if you are giving them free food and drinks. Get someone that's been there a few times. Get someone that maybe has like 300 followers or even 37,000 followers, but really make sure they've been to your business, they've engaged with your content before, and it's someone that's gonna spread good vibes and great content about you as well. Now, another way that you can do this and also, you know, if you have a little budget to play with is work with ads, especially on Instagram. And the thing I love about this is Instagram makes it very, very simple, like super simple. So you can actually figure out, select where um, to send people. So your profile, your website, maybe they can direct message you. Now, after that, you can define that audience. So special requirements for promotion about credit cards, automatic, and then you can also create your own. So you're going to be spending $15 over three days. And you that's the great thing I love about when you do advertisements. Everyone thinks, oh, I got to spend $500. You don't. And I love this is, so this is your budget, $5 daily. You're gonna spend $15 over three days. Look how many people you're estimated to reach. And that's only with $15 over three days, that's $5 a day. So advertising doesn't have to break the bank, but you can experiment and have fun with it. So definitely make sure that when you're trying to figure out where your diners are, you know, look at um, spending some money on some ads and getting engaged with them as well that way. Now onto our second point, set up online ordering and offering deliver delivery and takeout services. So I know with this year, we're still, some of us are sheltering in place. Some of us are staying at home. Some of us are going out to restaurants. Um, oh, Anna, sorry about your question. Um, it's creators. I'm gonna actually type that in here. There we go. And also y'all feel free to follow me on social media as well. I will follow you back. Um, and also if you have any questions about social media, I'm gonna put my email address in here later, but also feel free to direct message me on Instagram as well. Let's make it fun, let's, let's really use this platform. So set up online ordering and offer delivery and takeout services. So order online. I took this example from Soft Tea Donut because they were actually here not too long ago in Austin, Texas. Um, I did get my donuts. I was very close to not getting them. <laughs> they did a pop of actually coming here. So um, they did Donuts Delivery Orlando. So this is for Orlando, but they wanted to make sure that you know you connect to your website to make sure you get that order placed. With last year going on and now this year, I have learned if you're gonna order something and they tell you to order on a certain day, you do that. <laughs> do not wait until the last minute to order a turkey, side dishes or anything like that because it will not work out sometimes. <laughs> so definitely make sure if you're online ordering anything, do it earlier. More importantly, 
as a business owner, make sure you're putting that out in front of your customers multiple times because you definitely want to make sure they're, they're not showing up to your business. Oh, I'd like to place an order. Well, you have to place an order online before you can get your order here. I ran into that a couple of times last year, but I've learned my lesson. <laughs> so definitely make sure you're ushering your customers, your audience members in the right way. And I love that they did this with their website. Their, things are a little bit different, but we're still here for you. In-store pickup orders, place an order online for pickup at a time that you'd like, coffee menu included. So order for delivery, you can start your delivery order or donut letter packed. So they give you different options, but I like how they actually have their calls to action right here and they're all the same. Order now, order now, order now. Not set a time, schedule or anything, it's all order now. They're really telling you, hey, this is urgent because they might sell out. So definitely make sure that you're being urgent with your messages, but you're being consistent with it as well. Now, when you're gonna order on Instagram, Instagram is, is everything right now, but when you're doing this, look at these examples from Mozart's and P. Terry's. They actually included these um, with third-party apps that you can actually do, but you can actually put this plug in here for Instagram and order food. It takes you directly to their third-party app or maybe their website to plug that information in. Um, and I've come to find out a lot of them are either Grubhub, connects to Uber Eats, also a favor as well, and a lot of other third-party apps as well that you can actually use to plug in with your Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter to really make sure that they're going to order online to make this process seamless. Because I think at the end of the day, your consumers, they want to make sure that it's easy for them. And, and you as business owners, you want to make sure it's easy for them as well. So definitely make sure that you're letting your audience know they can order online, especially on Instagram, if they follow you, to make sure that their process is easy, it's easy on them, and it's also easy on you as well. So capitalizing with Instagram stories to leverage promotions. How many of us are currently using Instagram stories right now? Or maybe we're just going to dive into it in 2021. We've never used it before. We're a little bit skeptical, but we're excited about it. You can raise your hand. You can let us know in the chat box as well. Um, but we definitely want to make sure that you're going to capitalize with Instagram stories to leverage promotions. Um, Instagram stories are my all-time favorite. Um, if you haven't used Instagram stories yet, I suggest doing it whether that's a how-to, a tutorial. If you've ever seen those Vogue videos where they do, I think the 73 questions or the 60 questions, whatever it is, try that. And you're probably thinking, I can't come up with 73 questions, do 10 questions. You know, why'd you start your business? What is your favorite thing about working at said establishment? Um, you can, I can't hold all these questions right now, but you can definitely come up with a lot of different questions to ask the business owner or several employees. Um, oh, Elena, yes. I love that you like using IG stories. IG stories are legit. And more importantly, they're gonna help you connect with your audience members in a totally different way. If you're thinking about, hmm, I need to buff up my content, but you're not factoring in Instagram stories or Twitter fleet, or which is new for Twitter, their Twitter stories, and also Facebook stories and, and video content, you're kind of missing out. What I'm covering here for Instagram stories, you can actually apply to video content and even your regular content as well. So. One of the first things we went over is how-tos and tutorials, really, really important. Um, it just shows you more behind the scenes. It shows you what they're looking for. More importantly, it gives you an inside look of your business and what they can expect as well. Now, with behind the scenes, it's really, really important because it humanizes your business. More importantly, it humanizes that content. I think back to when I was posting on my business's social media sites and learning about filters and content and captions. I was just in college, this was all kind of new. So I didn't really know what was going on until later when I started taking courses. And I'm like, hmm, could, probably could have done a little bit better on those captions and not using so many filters. And that's one thing I did not do. And it was, I was gonna include a photo of when I first started doing things till now um, for a restaurant I actually worked with. And the difference is crazy, of course, <laughs> with me taking filtered pictures and everything. but you definitely wanna make sure you're using stories to get engaged with your audience and really use your voice in the strongest way possible. Your users and users in general on Instagram are spending 70% of their time on Instagram stories versus in your actual content. How many of us have ever noticed that we're not getting as many likes or an engagement on our actual posts that we might be posting on our social media sites? And the reason why that is, is because everything is now played off of your stories. So if no one's paying attention to your stories, whether that be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, it's kind of going to skew with how they're going to actually see you in your newsfeed. So I was thinking about this. Um, for example, one of my friends, she just had a baby. And 
I was like, wait a minute, I'm not seeing a lot of her content, but granted she's in Georgia, I'm in Texas. Work has been crazy. We've all been a little bit busy. And I noticed, I was like, I haven't liked a lot of her posts. So I went back, liked a few of her posts. And so now I'm starting to see more of her content in my newsfeed, but also see her stories back in my mix of stories as well. So if you're seeing a lack of engagement on your content, you're not seeing as many people in your stories, make sure you're encouraging people to follow you and to look at your stories and your content. Just like in this example, behind the scenes. Um, if you're not doing behind the scenes, you're not introducing your staff, y'all, you're missing out. I think one of my favorites, and I didn't include this one in here, is this um, restaurant in Georgia. It's called, um, it's called Paperboy. And yes, there is one in, in Austin, but there's also one in Athens, Georgia as well. Um, and this place I went to in college and just the best behind the scenes, whether they're making their ricotta pancakes or they're introducing their new chef or their new staff members. So definitely make sure that you're taking a chance to go behind the scenes and really introduce your team members. More importantly, y'all, just to have a lot of fun. When you're on Instagram stories, not anything goes, but they're less polished. They're not as professional. And if you drop the camera, you pick it right back up and you keep on going. <laughs> Instagram stories is where you're gonna have fun. Instagram stories is also where I'm gonna suggest that you also start including more special announcements. While we're seeing your special announcements in your content, you're not probably seeing as many likes or people comment or save. So the best way to do so is, I know it's a little bit outdated, it's from Christmas, but you definitely wanna make sure we're using something like this, like um, Nickel, Nickel City is in Austin. If you have something coming up for your local business, if it's Valentine's Day, maybe it's St. Patrick's Day all the way in March, start talking about it now. People wanna know about it because I think one of the biggest things that we do as entrepreneurs, as business, business owners, even consumers, is we wait till last minute sometimes to do things. We're like, oh, people are gonna come in and they don't. So always make sure that you're over communicating and you're starting out a little bit earlier than normal, especially right now with, um, with everything going on, you wanna make sure you're in the forefront of your customer's mind. So being in Instagram stories, making sure you're not spending as much time as in your newsfeed and you're spending more time in your Instagram stories and doing out video content as well. And then when you're also doing special announcements, think about how you've made a difference in your community. Whether you're doing compost, whether you are giving back to your community, you've donated something in the past. Those are also things that are connect you even more so with your audience than anything else. And I mean anything. Consumers, they want to see something that's real organic, but also something that means a lot to you as a business owner. I can think of a lot of charities that I'm very passionate about right now. Um, and more importantly, that you can possibly see on my social media sites as well when you visit them. And so as a local business, that's something that you should also share. When you think about sharing stuff on social media, don't think about it as, mm, this is my business. Think about it as, this is what my consumers want to see. This is what they would share with me as well. So think about it that way. What are your consumers looking to see? That's where you're gonna figure out your content the most. And I love this example right here from Future Soils. Our wares are generally made of organic compostable materials. This is something that your audience really wants to know. You're probably thinking, hmm, some people might not wanna know that, but at the same time, in today's age, people are wanting to know where things are coming from. Is it compostable? Compostable, <laughs> is it organic? Different things like that. So definitely make sure you're cluing your audience in on what's going on behind the scenes and also some special announcements that you have going on as well. And we talked about this a little bit earlier, making sure you're promoting your business. This is the best way to do so. Um, if you're wanting to get more action on your actual Instagram feed, share that post to your actual Instagram story. So you see here, they just share this by clicking on this little airplane, share it to their stories and voila, it's in their Instagram stories. Now you also see this ribbon right here. This ribbon is gold for local businesses. This is where you're gonna be saving content. And when you save content, hey, that's a super like. So encourage your audience to save, like, comment, but more importantly, all those three things right there is gonna be a, a great job of doing engagement for your local business. Because when they comment, that shows that you're posting content, they can actually get engaged with what they wanna talk about. When they share this, that means they're generally interested in this and they wanna share this with more of their followers. But when they save this, that's when you know they're gonna hold on to this and keep it for future reference as well. So definitely make sure that you're sharing content that's gonna be able to be commented on, it's gonna be engaging, shareable, and also that they can save as well. So time-sensitive deals and offers. 
when we think about this and we think about promotions and ads, we think about all this money off, all these percentages. But one thing that, that we tend to forget about is the picture. So whenever you're thinking about your promo, you're thinking about sensitive deals, anything like that, always throw in food, always throw in drinks, always throw in picture. Every one of these stories, they're offering deals and promos. Each one of them has a food item, a drink item in it. Because at the end of the day, we're going to read this, but at the same time, it's not going to capture our attention and engage us in a way that's going to provoke some kind of thought or make us go buy something, then, then it's kind of a waste of a post. So you definitely want to make sure that you're including high quality graphics. You're having that great call to action, as you can see right here on these last three, see more, sign up, shop now. But more importantly, you're making this as urgent as possible, and you're showing out great content and great photos as well. So turn your review sites into a customer service powerhouse. How many of us respond to our reviews on maybe Yelp, Google, you got Facebook, TripAdvisor? Y'all can all let me know as well. And if you're not responding, that's a-okay too. Elena, so is it okay to share if we made a donation to a local charity? Yeah, if you wanna share that you made a donation to a local charity or org, it's not bragging, it's you just sharing. But the great thing I love that how you can also make this where it's not bragging, say, hey, we want to also get everyone else included on this. So maybe you can match a certain donation, like up to $100, up to $150, up to $300, you'll match. So always, always share what you're doing, but always encourage people to donate if they're passionate about that cause as well. So if you want to get more out of your cause, encourage other people to get passionate about that cause as well. So Kristen, the way to get that swipe up option is you have to have um, they have to grant that to you. That's usually about 10,000 followers or more that you're going to get that swipe up function for your business. You can always appeal that on Instagram, but usually it's not going to get approved. Um, it's a process they have to go through, but yeah. No, no problem. So respond to your reviews. Everyone should be responding to all your reviews no matter what. Um, if someone gave you information about your business to say, hey, this pasta was great, um, but your server wasn't really attentive, um, you know, might want to talk to them, you know, you would address that person right there. Thanks so much. I'll talk to this person um, as well. Make sure that, you know, we're on the same page. Thanks so much for your feedback. You know, you just want to walk away, be like, all right, thanks. You definitely want to make sure you're showing great customer service online, just like you would in person. The conversation doesn't stop just because they paid their bill, they left you a tip and they're out your door because they picked it up. That conversation is still going on and, it, and it's still going on because they're going to be spreading well, that I organic word of mouth as well. So you definitely want to make sure that you are, um, I don't have one. that you are getting the most out of your social media sites. And that's by making sure that you're responding to those reviews. So first, so first things first, Richard said, drove 20 minutes and arrived at 745. They had the chains up and were closed. Hours of operation say 9 p.m. They were there and a couple cars were waiting to vacuum. They only had one spot open for those three cars. They're disappointed to the drive that far and then close them out, no rain, or all rain. So when you're responding back to reviews, you definitely want to make sure that, that you're not just responding for the sake of just responding. You're responding to everyone else that's looking for a restaurant, um, a bar to go to. Um, maybe a place to go pick up some cheese, maybe some wine. Definitely make sure you're not just responding just for Al or Amy. You're responding for every other patron that's going to be coming into your business or looking at your Yelp or Google page. And, and when you think about it, no, it's not a one size fits all. Just because you respond to a review doesn't mean it's going to automatically be better. But at the same time, you have to try new things out to get different results. And if you're, if you're not going to be responding to reviews, but you yet wonder why people are still leaving you negative reviews, that's probably the reason why you have to show great customer service online, just like you would in person. That story, like I said, still continues on. Responding to reviews is going to help you out more um, than possibly putting money into paid advertising. People are looking at those comments and this is where they're making that purchasing decision. So just like in this one right here, stopped in for quickly for a few drinks. Um, he leaves a one-star review, goes on a little bit more. Um, so Jack, the business owner says, thank you for reaching out, Al. We would like to apologize if you felt uncomfortable in any way when you visited. Now, I'm gonna stop right here because one of the first things that Jack did was address the person by their name. Thank you for reaching out, Al. Boom, name right there. We'd like to apologize if you felt uncomfortable in any way when you visited. 
Our goal is to make sure you felt taken care of when you stop in. So we're sorry to hear that that wasn't the case. So this is when you come in to defend and also apologize for what happened. Hopefully you'll consider giving us another try in the future so we can share more of the incredible wine we have to offer. Leaving that open line of communication and offering for them to come back in as well. If you get a negative review and you start saying, hey, next time you come in, ask for Jack, we'll give you 10% off. If you're gonna do that, do it in a private message, email them, but never offer anyone a percentage off for a free appetizer or a free meal. That's gonna turn into a snowball effect and all you're gonna start getting is negative comments and having to start giving people free food and free drinks. So when in doubt, you know, take it offline. And by take it offline, I mean, respond back privately or say, hey, email us or give us a call. We'd love to resolve this issue and answer any other questions that you might have. The best thing to do in negative situations like this, if you can't respond back publicly, publicly to the actual person, respond back saying, hey, call me, email me here. You're showing your future customers that you're taking this seriously and you wanna resolve the issue. But when you don't respond and you say, oh, we respond back privately, but not everyone else knows that. So you definitely need to make sure you respond back publicly to your community but respond back privately to Al or Amy or Jack, whoever's leaving that review, Jeffrey, whoever. So we're gonna jump into some positive reviews. I know we're talking about restaurants, but I definitely wanted to make sure that you're seeing how to also respond back to just some one-liners as well. Um, this person said, I got my hair braided. There, there it was, five-star rating. We appreciate you taking a moment to leave this review, Mark. Again, this is simple and easy, but if we can assist you in the future, let us know, Jose V, the owner. So really making sure still they're using that person's first name. Number two, they're asking, hey, if you need anything else, let us know. They're leaving that open line of communication. They're really making sure they're not just saying, hey, thanks for coming in. And yes, a simple thanks, a thumbs up goes a long way. But if someone is going out of their way to leave you a great review, you need to respond back. So definitely make sure you're doing that. Now, we can't forget about TripAdvisor. More importantly, we can't forget to respond back to these reviews. So. If you're in the mood for a classic throwback, Bob's Big Boy is your choice. Their COVID guidelines were disappointing in that our family of seven needed to be split into two tables. We would have preferred to set it adjacent tables, space appropriately, but they could not accommodate that. The food was just as remembered from my last visit at least 30 years ago, 30 years ago. Big juicy burgers, wonderful fries and onion rings, salads that come with all the sandwiches and or all the dressings on the side. Um, the burger on the combination plate is more like a Big Mac with two skinny patties on the bun but the other burgers are thick and juicy and cooked just right. If you're looking for a classic retro experience, Bob's will deliver. So reading this review, I think the biggest upset that we got from this was the COVID guidelines. So, which we all know that everyone's dealing with this in different ways. So definitely wanted to make sure that we included an example of how to respond to this if this has come your way and you haven't figured out how to deal with this on your review sites. So Philip said, thanks for coming by to enjoy a little walk down memory lane with us, Lynn. Love that. Gotta make sure that Lynn knows that we're paying attention to her name. And also when people, when you say their first name, it's like, oh, you're paying a little bit more attention now because you feel like they're calling you out. You feel like they're paying a little bit more attention. So we're glad the whole family enjoyed, though we're sorry if you were frustrated by the separation of the tables. So apologizing, but about to defend, we wanna ensure everyone who comes to our place is more than safe by keeping our tables an appropriate distance apart. So appreciate you and your family for adhering to our guidelines while you were there. Hope we can welcome you all back again, another round of Incredible Burger soon. So learning when to defend and apologize and really sticking your ground, but also leaving that open line of communication and signing off as well. So you can't forget to respond back to these reviews. More importantly, you gotta just take it slow. If you see a review and you're like, oh, I need to respond right away, take a breather, sit back, write something out or type it out, and then go back and read it again. Don't just write and type out the first thing that comes to mind. Um, definitely make sure you're taking time to read the review, sprinkle back what they said back into your response and making sure you're giving a great thoughtful response to that customer as well. So you wanna make sure you highlight great customer testimonials and whether you're a bar, you're a restaurant, you're a wine shop, one thing you have to do is go to your Yelp, go to your Google page. More importantly, use apps like Canva, C-A-N-V-A or over, O-V-E-R to really judge up um, your profiles, um, not your profiles, your posts, adding color, adding um, backlays to that, adding graphics to it, really making sure that you're not just showing off another great review. 
you're showing off something that your customer said about your business that's going to help spark engagement from other future customers and even current customers as well that might not have been to your business in a minute. So if we're trying to turn those Instagram followers and actual customers, we can't do that without doing a little bit of our homework. So the best way to do your homework is to gain insight and revenue from metrics in your analytics. So how many of us actually look at our metrics and our analytics um, for our social media sites, specifically Instagram? So Kristen, having text on your posts is actually pretty cool. Um, let me show you. Back this up just a little bit, y'all. So just doing like an overlay like this, or even just like in this one, what more do you need to know in just that red box is just something simple, something easy. Um, and the reason why I say just adding a little bit of graphic or something on there is just as a way to pop, it makes it not as general or as just plain, if you will, it adds a little bit something more. And even more so if you have a graphic or a logo that you put in that backlay, it also helps out with that brand recognition and that brand awareness as well. So different ways, different types of, um, things that you can do to make sure that you're coming up with great types of content, great types of posts as well. No, Kristen, they are always changing. So yes, it's one of those things where you have to do your homework, you have to be on it a lot, um, but also I'm glad that you know that. So clearly someone's doing their homework and y'all should all be like Kristen and be in the know as well. So like Alana said, she said, I track my insights but need to look further into them. So I love that y'all are on this. Y'all are. Y'all are on the, on the ball. So four things that you need to be aware of. Brand awareness, customer satisfaction, gaining new customers, and brand loyalty. So let's kick it off with brand awareness. The way that you're going to figure out your brand awareness is, kind of just talked about this, is making sure that everything is claimed, optimized, more importantly, and I know this might sound not gross, but a little bit weird, but your logo, your brand, your name is everywhere, decently everywhere, not spammy but it's everywhere that makes sense. Um, one of the coolest things that I've seen, and it was in a Halloween store, is they had their logo, but also something for you to tag them with like a little hashtag on the floor. Because think about it, we're all in line right now. If we're ordering in your restaurant or we're standing out line to pick up our food, you usually have markers that say stand six feet apart. So instead of having those markers say stand six feet apart, because I feel like we all know that by now, why not put a cool hashtag on those markers? Or why not say, hey, this is a great time to grab a photo for you to tag us on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Come with, with creative ways to include your brand into every single thing that you're doing, whether people are waiting in line or they're looking at your receipt when they're checking out. Make sure you include your brand and you up in your brand awareness across your social media sites and across your business strategy as well. Now, customer satisfaction. The way you're gonna know that your customers are satisfied is your reviews, how they engage with your content. Are they leaving you comments on your social media sites and on your post? Are they sending you direct messages? These are the great ways that you can figure out, are my customers satisfied? Am I doing my job right by delivering great, high quality, engaging content on my social media sites on Instagram? Now, if you're looking to gain new customers, the way that you can tell through this is looking at your insights on Google and on your Yelp. So looking at driving directions and also calling or calls click to calls as well. So if someone presses your number um, on your Google My Business page and you immediately call them, you can track that in your analytics as well. So really tracking on who's getting directions and who's clicking to call you. Now brand loyalty kind of goes back up there with brand awareness, but in order to increase that brand loyalty, start using your customer's content, respond to the reviews, more importantly, making sure your customers are part of that brand as well. So if you're thinking, I don't know what type of content to post, Ask your customers, make them feel a part of your brand even more so than they think they already are. I was looking at a restaurant's business page and I think it was on the second, I forget what day it was, but they're like, hey, we wanna know what you wanna see this year in 2021. And I was like, that's actually smart. So they had a fill in the box, what kind of content do you wanna see? And the next day they said, these were all the answers that we got. We're already starting our marketing strategy. So we're really excited to be producing great content for you. Something simple, something easy, and a great way to make sure that your audience feels involved and engaged. So when you're thinking about looking at your metrics and you're thinking about 2021 as a whole, you're thinking about your marketing strategy, maybe you don't wanna to plan too far ahead, but one thing that you've gotta know is everyone's not your audience. While yes, everyone loves food, a vegan person is not gonna necessarily come to a barbecue restaurant unless you're serving vegan barbecue, which I've actually had, it's pretty good. 
but definitely make sure you know who your audience is. You're looking at your metrics. You're looking at what's working, what's not working. Who's actually getting engaged with you? Who's commenting on your post the most? Is it millennials? Is it boomers? Is it Generation Z? Is it moms? Is it dads? Is it teens? You know, really figure out who's getting engaged with you the most and start developing that persona. Start developing that personality for your social media sites via that. Now, I know I need to update my insights for Instagram. I also haven't posted in a minute. I've been posting on my stories a lot though. Um, and I actually am up to 1500 followers. So a lot of new things happening in 2021. Um, but your insights, yes, you can click this box, but I also wanted to give people that wanted to be a little bit more old school like me and go through the actual steps of getting to your insights right here. You can also see your safe posts. I have a lot um, and also broken down into different categories, <laughs> but your insights, this is where you can see everything. And I love your insights is because I can really figure out as a business owner, who my audience is, is my audience men or women more? Are they the ages between 25 and 34? Yes, they are. You know, when are they going to engage with me the most, the hours throughout the day? If you're not looking at your insights and not just for Instagram, you got to check them out on Twitter, got to check them out on Facebook, Yelp, Google. Got to make sure you're checking out these insights because this is what's going to really tell you what's working and what's not working. Because let's say you're posting every day at 9 a.m. just because, you know, hey, it's easy. Press a button. Boom. You got to post up. But you're thinking, hmm, it's not getting a lot of engagement. Maybe I should look into my insights. Maybe I should do something different. Don't be afraid to mix things up. Also, y'all, don't be afraid to ask for help. If you don't understand how these insights work, like I said, I'm gonna put my email address in here. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm here to answer questions. I'm here to help you out, even work through this together. So definitely make sure that you're looking at your insights, you're studying a little bit as well, and you're figuring out how to improve, how to get better the next time that you post. So I know I've been talking for a while, <laughs> but I wanna turn it over to all of you as well. Oh, thank you. Um, so any questions that you might have, put them in the chat box right now. We're gonna be going through these. Um, we have about eight minutes left for today's webinar, but any questions that you might have, put them in here and I'm gonna be answering them as best as I can. And I'm gonna start following people back. I just saw that I have like four, 14 notifications right now. Also, thank you whoever likes some of these photos. <laughs> thank you, Sarah. Give me one second, y'all. Okay, so we got a question here. Um, so Kristen asked, can I get, sorry, can I get your thoughts on having separate Insta accounts from multiple locations? So Kristen, yes. You definitely wanna make sure you have um, separate pages for different locations. The biggest takeaway I can give you for this, I'm just making up a name, let's say it's Nalgene and it's Nalgene Austin. Do Nalgene dash Austin or do Nalgene dash Fort Worth or Nalgene dash Houston to make sure that you're deciphering which cities they're in instead of just doing, you know, like I've seen business do location one, two or three or so on and so forth. Um, but also things that I love when people have multiple locations is when they do guides to their city um, and what makes their city unique and why they also chose that location as well um, for that business. So make sure that you're making each location um, maybe you want to post the same content across each business page, but also make sure you're making them personable and engaging as well across them. I know it's a lot of work, but I feel like you're doing a great job at it. I'm going to check that out, but yeah, definitely make sure that you're having different um, accounts for your different locations and also make sure you're deciphering which city they're in as well. And also if you're figuring out, trying to figure out what content to put on these locations, sorry, I went on a tangent on this. Start by introducing your staff members for each location. If you have different managers for each location, start off with that as well. A little behind the scenes, a little introduction never hurts. Bailey, I've had trouble linking our Facebook page with Instagram. I try to do the toggle and it won't move. I've tried contacting both parties to figure it out. I've stopped even trying. Any help or idea would be great. So you're just really trying to connect the two together. Um, 
the biggest thing, as far as I know, the only thing you have to do is just go into your Instagram settings and that should work. If not, I do have a blog. Um, I'm going to put my email address in here right now and I can actually send that to you as well to help you get that connected. And sorry if you'll hear my typing, I apologize. But yes, Bailey, send that, send me your um, email and, or send me an email. I'll be able to send you back that link to make sure that has, you have that full breakdown. Sorry, if I can get my words right. Lori, what happens in the days when people ask for a manager to give feedback before they leave the restaurant versus waiting until they're home and then slamming the restaurant on social media? Yeah, I mean, social media review sites. I, I was reading this article of why Yelp started and it honestly started out for just restaurants and then of course evolved into a lot of businesses, but the owner just wanted a place where they could share experiences and also experiences in their local, actual local area. This wasn't supposed to be a big thing and then it spiraled into a big thing. So that's eventually how that started, but also of course social media and people wanted to stay active and stay caught up where everyone is in every moment. Oh, so Bailey, you've been deleted and reconnected many times. It has to be something that must be going with my personal page and business page that might have something to do with it. I would check and make sure if your personal page, of course, it has to be linked. Just make sure everything is good. That email address is active as well. Sometimes that might be the ultimate problem. So Veronica, I love this question. Y'all are just great with the questions today. Um, oh, perfect. So is it okay to have different accounts on Instagram, but one Facebook page? So Veronica, my thing is, if you're going to have the different accounts on Instagram, probably need to do the same on Facebook. Um, and also make sure that's going to also help you save time on the content creation for that as well. But if you do have separate locations on your Instagram, might as well just go ahead and do those for your Facebook to make sure you're staying consistent as well. Um, more importantly, it just looks a little bit better when you already have that done on Instagram, just do the same thing on Facebook as well. Yeah, they should be separate. That, and if you feel like that's too much taking on, then you can leave it that way um, with the different Instagram and the one Facebook. But I do, but I do encourage you to at least check it out on Facebook and see if it's worth a try um, without losing any of your fans or anything like that. And that should be able to help you. I was like, that's my email. I was like, who put that in there? I did. Uh, Uh, yes, thank you, Kristen. Now, Aaron, I've had major issues linking Instagram with one table. Before COVID, all five of my restaurants were linked. Once we went to lockdown, we adjusted them all to order here, connected to Toast. Sorry, I was trying to make sure I was reading it right. And now we'd like to switch back. Instagram just doesn't give me the option. And I've Googled and Googled and can't find any help. Instagram also doesn't provide support. Curious if anyone has found a workaround. Aaron, I actually have a blog for that of making sure that you're connecting your third party into that. Um, so you have my email address, it's right above this, I think right above Kristen's. Um, so feel free to email me this and I'll make sure you have that blog as well. Yes, employee introductions are amazing. Y'all, if you haven't done them yet, do them. My, one of my favorite ones I've ever seen was um, a local Italian restaurant, it was North. I can't remember what state it was, but they did a little introduction of themselves. It was really fun, but the coolest thing was at the end, they each did a cheers and they did their little team cheers that they do right before they start their shift. And they're like, we wanted, we wanted you to see it, what it was, what it was like for us before customers come in. So we invite you to cheers with us and get ready for our shift with us as well. And they did it right before they literally opened the doors um, for that night shift. So that was pretty cool. If you can do that, I suggest doing it. But ultimately, y'all have fun with your social media sites. That's what we're all here for is to have fun to make sure we're staying engaged and more importantly, to answer all of our customers' questions. Now, I know we went over a lot of great information today. If you have any questions, anything specific from me, well, please email me. That's what I'm here for. My job doesn't stop just because this webinar is over. I'm here to help you in any way possible, whether that's blogs, whether you have questions and you need to email me these certain questions, email me. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to Anna and her team for inviting me to share this amazing content. More importantly, to hang out with you all for an hour. I truly appreciate it. Um, a huge thank you to Texas Restaurant Association. Y'all are amazing. Um, again, thank you to all who attended. Y'all are also amazing as well. And I hope to see you all next time in future webinars as well. Thank you, Jeffrey. Have a good day. Thanks everyone.